This is Josh Holyfield, and welcome to another episode of Make America Swole Again. A no bullshit, no sugarcoating, snowflake free podcast where I teach you how to step out of your comfort zone, stop dreaming, and start smashing your goals in fitness and in life. Hey everyone, this is Josh Holyfield, and welcome to the Make America Swole Again podcast. Hey, so for those of you guys who were checking in with me last week on Tuesday, I apologize. I was out of town, wasn't able to get back in time in order to uh, make the stream, make the podcast, so I decided, decided to just go ahead and postpone it this week. Uh, that should be kind of a few and far in between type of thing, but unfortunately I had some other stuff going on, so I wasn't able to get to it. Um, <clears throat> so before I get into the introduction... And before I, uh, oh, the, the baby's waking up too. Damn, man, my, just my night. All right, so before I get into that, um, I want to take a moment to do a very, very, very special shout out for a gentleman that I know from Instagram. He's one of the followers uh, and one of the users of our free four-week training protocol his name is Rick Rick White, and if you guys are on Instagram, I'm gonna type his his handle in here for fit for forty. Okay, so if, for those of you guys who didn't watch this video, okay, that I posted last week or earlier this week, um, Rick reached out to me and he's like, "Hey, Josh." Um, your four week training has completely changed my life. Um, it's the only program I've been able to use to really make an impact and a difference. And I'm seeing some incredible results. I'd like to send you something. So I'm not going to go over all the details that I went through like I did in the, uh, in the video, but I just wanted to take the time to show you guys what Rick sent me. Okay. So I'm going to grab the webcam here and I'm going to look, move it that is sitting above my desk so it's a powder coated metal sign all right and he had that custom made and delivered to my front door as a way of saying thank you awesome F amazing I talked about how thankful and humbled I was and how appreciative I was in the video and I wanted to just take a moment real quick to start the podcast this week to show you guys that incredible. So thank you very much, Rick. Um, you're a great man and I appreciate it. All right, let me fix this camera here. Hey, Pablo, welcome. Mike, welcome to the stream. Chuck, welcome, brother. Good to see you in here. James, thanks, man. I appreciate you always showing up bro i really appreciate you logan welcome brother uh let's see who else we got in here all right so before i get back into what i was going to go into uh very first thing is, is for those of you guys who are still here check wait uh checking out the stream if you have any questions you want to interact with me i'm i'm following and i'm tracking this chat right here and my goal is to answer all the questions and interact with you guys that's why i do the stream live or the podcast live okay all right so, um, I'm, I want to hold the announcements to the end, um, and so I kind of did a review of the videos, you know, the past uh, recordings, and uh, I decided that kind of the announcements at the beginning of the stream kind of delays us actually getting into the quality content. I want you guys to get the opportunity to take advantage of that high quality content, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start holding the announcements to the end of the stream. All right, so all the things that are changing with joshholyfield.com, all the updates, all the new stuff, etc., that will be coming at the end. So, this week we're going to talk about mental fortitude. Okay, um, and the key aspect of this whole mental fortitude isn't going to be like be mentally tough, right? I know that that's uh, commonly what we think about, especially the vets, when it comes to mental fortitude. I'm going to take a different spin on it, okay? 
But before I get into that, I'm going to just quickly go over kind of what we talked about during last week's stream. So if you missed it, you want to go back. Fredo, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, you can always catch up on the previous stream. So last week's stream was titled Garbage In, Garbage Out. Okay, and the and I'll be honest with you, I kind of uh, freestyled it. There was no script. I just went for it. Uh, that was because I was out of time and I didn't get the time to go over, go through and write the script. But it ended up being a really high quality stream where I got lots of really good information I was able to put out to you guys. Um, so a couple of things that we talked about were uh, fad diets, right? Keto, carnivore, paleo, fucking you name it. Uh, and basically why all those diets fucking suck. Hey Dave, welcome brother. Um, and the reason they suck is because they're restrictive. You're taking something and you're saying you can't eat this. Specifically a macronutrient most of the time. Right? So in keto it's we're not eating carbs. With carnivore, we're even more restrictive. We're only eating meat, right? Um, we, are, as human beings, aren't any of those things. We are omnivores. We eat everything. A variety of different things, right? Um, and I'll be honest with you, kind of the thing I went over last week is this shit's not rocket science when it comes to nutrition, okay? Eat a well-rounded diet of high-quality foods. Know your target calories and macros based on your goal boom done that's it okay um, to take that a step further when it comes to your goals if you want to lose weight eat in a caloric deficit of what your body needs if you want to gain weight eat in a surplus pretty simple all right so for those of you guys who don't know or you're new, you haven't seen my content before, on my website, if you go over to the, the top menu, there's a link that says uh, Macro Nutrition Guide. All you got to do is click on it, and it's literally going to explain all of this stuff in a fucking three-page article that provides you all the information that you need to get started with your diet. Not just that. I also have another page that it's linked within there that gives you takes you to a calculator. You plug in your weight, your height, and then it spits out all the all your macros based on your goal. Now, just real quick as a caveat to that macro uh, calculator, I don't know your body fat, I don't know your BMI. Um, it's variable to every person, so you're going to use those calories that that calculator spits out for you as a starting point and then make adjustments from there, right? Every week or two weeks, you should be changing your ca calories and your macros around based upon what you want to do and how your body's responding with your metabolism, okay? Uh, one of the things that I found was extremely, extremely valuable from last week's stream was uh, the, the whole segment I did discussing carb cycling, okay? I talked about that concept in excruciating detail, how it works, explained it uh, in a very easy to understand method. Hey Trevor, welcome. Uh, and if you missed that, I also did a cut, put it on Instagram and Facebook where I just literally just cut that portion of the podcast out and reposted it. So if you're interested, go check that out. And for the, those of you who don't know what carb cycling is, it's just basically a fancy word for consuming carbs when your body needs them instead of all the time. That's basically it, okay? And one more thing before I get started. Um, so in the last podcast, I had to reiterate kind of the concept and the purpose of the Josh Holyfield Goal Getters Group. Most of the people who watch the podcast are people who are heavily involved, uh, in that group, they're hot, they're contributors of that group. And so I thought this would be a great forum to take the time to thank you guys. Okay. I, I've noticed a, a tremendous shift, positive shift in the attitude and the contribution and just the overall atmosphere of the group. And I wanted to take that, take the time to point that out and, and thank you guys 
for the you know who are consistently contributing. Um, the bottom line is the success of my business and my brand is solely based on your success and achieving your goals, right? And when I have people like you who are driving each other to reach your goals, ultimately that positively impacts my business and my brand. So I can't thank you enough. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys keep doing what you're doing. And not just that, but I mean, you're, you're given an opportunity with this group to have a positive impact on people around you. And I think that's pretty, pretty awesome in itself. Okay. All right. Hey, Jim, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. <clears throat> All right. So with that said, if you guys have any suggestions on how I can improve the content and the things that you guys are uh, consuming in that group, make sure you let me know. Reach out, send me a message. Okay? Okay, so like I said earlier, this week I'm going to be talking about mental fortitude. But not mental fortitude in the sense of be tough, right? Um, and to explain the concept that I want to go over, I'm going to start by taking the time to talk about one thing and that's the fact that in your life no matter what the circumstance no matter what the situation you're in no matter where you're at you always have a choice it might not be the optimal choice or the best choice or you may be have you may have a limited number of choices that you can make but at the end of it, you always have a choice. You know, one of the things that people talk about, and it's kind of an argument when you're talking about like criminal justice, people doing study in that, is if somebody's holding a gun to your head and they force you to do something, okay, at the end of that, like, you still had a choice of whether or not you were going to do that, right? Um, now we can talk about the theory behind all that and you know, what does, how does the law protect somebody who's threatened with the choice of dying or doing something they don't want? But the point that I'm trying to make is you always have a choice. Okay. And more often than not, the most impactful decision that you can make in any circumstance is how you choose to respond and react to the things that occur in your life. Right? Like, how you choose to react to these external things that are occurring to you that are outside of your control are going to greatly and tremendously, we're using that word tonight, impact the outcome and how things pan out and just the overall and not just that but you're all your your own well-being right so i guess my next question as we're going into this and kind of this is a hypothetical cuz is okay so how does that statement apply to mental fortitude but before i get into that i want to talk about something that i don't think we talk about very much and that's stress Let's take some time to talk about stress. And the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about how stress impacts your body. So everybody knows, or you may be, one of those people who's just constantly worried or concerned with just about anything and everything that's occurring in your life. Right? Um, constantly stressed about something. Okay? That may be you, it may not be. Either way, uh, the point that I'd like to make tonight is managing your stress is much more important than most people take the time to consider. Okay, so when it comes to the impact of stress on your body, okay, most oftentimes people think of like the mental and psychological symptoms that are associated with having a high, high amount of stress. Right, you know, so things like depression, anxiety, insomnia, 
uh, loss of mental focus, loss of memory, loss of mental for performance, forgetfulness, the list goes on. Okay, like when you're stressed out, it's constantly bearing down on your just your mental state, your psychological state. You're going to be dealing with things like insomnia, trouble sleeping, etc. Okay. Hey, Aaron, wel welcome, brother. I haven't heard from you in a while. Hope you're doing well. Um, but one of the things that or the other aspect of stress that not very many people talk about or consider is the impact that stress has on your on your body physically okay so <clears throat> um and stress is just as detrimental to your physical well-being as it is to your mental and your psychological well-being and if you guys remember we did a podcast i think it was episode three or four how i talked about how your physical your mental your psychological well-being and state are all interconnected okay and there's a reason for that right some of the symptoms that we might be some of the symptoms that we might uh, experience when we're undergoing a high amount of stress could be simple shit like uh, having low energy I'm constantly tired I'm sure you guys have heard of stress headaches okay but some of the things that we don't really see very commonly and are oftentimes not attributed to stress unless you go and see a doctor about it is things like gastrointestinal issues. You actually will have trouble properly digesting food with diarrhea or constipation when you're stressed out. Okay. You could experience like extreme amount of tenseness or soreness in your muscles even when you're not doing resistance training from stress. Okay. You can experience extreme weight gain when you're stressed out. Okay. There's a reason why every uh, short hair Bob Karen that's asking for a manager is most times overweight because the lady's probably stressed the fuck up about everything. And she's having trouble losing weight because she's constantly stressed. Okay. That's just a generalization. Correct me if I'm wrong, but most Karens, right? The ladies who are asking for the manager are overweight. Well, those are the types of people who are constantly stressed about shit, okay? Um, <clears throat> not just the weight gain, but it's going to increase your blood pressure, okay? It's going to have a negative impact on your immune system. You're not going to be able to fight off viruses, things like the cold or the flu or whatever, right? Stress impacts your libido, your sex drive. It's also going to impact your performance while having sex, can impact your appetite okay so you're thinking about this and all these these list of things that i'm talking about okay <laughs> that's funny james right where does all this come from okay well i'm going to talk about some science tonight and i don't do science unless it's bro science most times but I actually i'm actually a pretty intelligent guy i just try to simplify things for people so Here's what I'm going to tell you. The reason why we undergo all of these symptoms from stress is because when you're stressed out, your body releases an excess of a hormone called cortisol. Okay? And for those of you guys don't, who don't know what cortisol is, in the bodybuilding world, cortisol is common, commonly referred to as one of the biggest enemies of muscle gain. And yes, cortisol and stress impact protein synthesis, which is muscle growth when you're working out. Okay? So cortisol is basically a naturally occurring hormone in your body that's responsible for controlling a lot of different things. Okay? Hey, Jim. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Okay? And a lot of these things are good, right? We need this cortisol. It's important. It's a hormone. But just like anything else in our body, too much of something is going to cause a detrimental impact on our body. Okay? So just to give you an example of what cortisol does, depending upon the cells that it's interacting with, is it's controlling your body's blood sugar levels. Okay? Which regulate your metabolism. Uh, cortisol impacts or acts as anti-inflammatory for your body. Okay, natural anti-inflammatory. It influences your memory formation. 
notice, remember when I talked about one of the psychological effects of stress was forgetfulness, right? Memory loss. Uh, stress impacts or cortisol impacts your salt and water balance, okay? Which influ influences your blood pressure and things like that, okay? And even in pregnant women, cortisol is also partially res responsible for helping with fetal development, okay? So this hormone is extremely powerful and it's important, right? When you're in the gym and you're working out, you're putting your body under stress. Your body is naturally going to release cortisol, okay? It's not bad. Too much cortisol is bad. And that's where you're going to see all of those symptoms that we talked about, okay? And when you're stressed out, your body's releasing excess of that hormone, okay? Now, there's a lot of science, there's a lot of articles, and there's a lot of opinion, and there's a lot of disagreement about the impact and how cortisol is regulated and the way it works and how do we control it and things like that. And, and the extremely advanced bodybuilding communities are actually looking at ways to uh, synthetically decrease your body's production of cortisol so that you can basically grow muscle faster, okay? Now, that's not what we're worried about here in this podcast tonight. The focus that I want to have is going back to what we were talking about with the mental fortitude, which I'll get to, okay? Right now, we're talking about how stress releases that cortisol, okay? The purpose and the point that I'm trying to make is that if you're stressed out, you're constantly worried and you're letting something or things or stuff weigh you down and you're carrying this stress with you where you go, your body's releasing this hormone. And that hormone is going to greatly, greatly, greatly have a detriment to the results you see in the gym and your fat loss if you're trying to lose fat, if you're trying to gain muscle, okay? So let's go back to the first point that I made at the beginning of this segment, okay? I quote myself, and I'll say, in your life, no matter what the circumstance, you always have a choice, okay? One of those choices being how you respond and react to things, okay? So, I've got a lot of you guys who are looking to make some serious gains, make some serious progress. Just the fact that you're spending all of your time stressed out about the fact that you're not getting the results that you want in the gym is creating a cyclic negative impact on the results that you're not getting in the gym. <laughs> right? Think about that for a second. You're, it's like inception of lack of gains, if you think about it, right? Like, fuck, dude. Um, so the point that I really want to make tonight is in a world where we have so much going on, so many distractions and so many external influences and relationships and people moving around and all these things occurring on a constant basis, one of the choices and the decisions that we have to consciously make, he said, yeah, I win, <laughs> is Choosing not to allow things that you cannot control impact you, okay? Think about that. If you cannot, like, so so I always reference my mom in my podcast. I, don't, I talk to her a lot, right? And uh, years ago when I was going through divorce, you know, my mom, she came to me and, you know, we talk a lot about the stuff that we're going through and blah, blah, blah. And she basically said, look, when it comes to your life, you basically have three choices. If there's something going on in your life that you're, you're not happy with, okay, you've got three choices. You can change it. You can tolerate it. Or you can walk away. Those are the choices you've got, bottom line. If you can't change it, 
then either you tolerate it or you walk away. And if you simplify that down to the most basic level, it seems a lot easier than it really is, right? Obviously, there's you know a gray area when it comes to everything in life. But if you think about things and set the emotion aside and think about these things logically, it makes your decision-making process a lot more simple and easier to undergo, right? So when it comes to, you know, like I was saying, all these things that are occurring in your life, when you have something happen, the very first question you should be asking yourself is, how can I impact this? How can I change this? How can I fix this? If it's outside of your control, then there's no reason to fucking stress about it. The only thing that you can do is what's within your lane, within your piece of pie, within your scope, to do your best to influence that thing. But at the end of the day, if it's outside of your control, it's outside of your control. Why are you going to spend time and energy focused on that thing if you can't control it, right? So, my personal opinion is if you come to a place, now somebody, I don't know it off the top of my head and I probably should, there's a Bible verse that talks about this. I intended on putting it in the script, but it's not there. There's literally a Bible verse that talks about this whole concept. It's like, accept the things that I can write. Somebody will put it in the chat here in a second. Okay. But I want you to take the time to think about, if you can't look at it from that perspective that I provided you, is in every moment or every day, you as a human being have so much energy mental energy that you can attribute towards things right and if you're allocating 50 percent of your mental energy stressing and thinking about something that's outside of your control then that amount of energy is now being wasted when you could have been applying that to things that you can control in your life right so there's a reason why people who are constantly stressed and constantly negative and constantly cynics and constantly down on themselves generally have a low quality of life and well-being because they're spending so much time stressing about these things over here that they're not focusing on developing and growing the things over here that are within their scope of control. Okay? The serenity prayer, Jim, Jim said. Can you paste the actual quote in there, would you? Okay, so <clears throat> let go. Let go of that, of those things. You know, I can't tell you how many times somebody will come to me and say, hey, this happened. And I'll say, okay. What do you want me to do about it? <laughs> like, what do you mean what you want me to do about it? You know, like, what do you want me to do about it? And, and a great example is politics. Dude, politics, especially this time, you know, we're coming up on the presidential re-election here in a few months. The Democratic caucus is, is going on. They're getting ready to pick their dude. And people are freaking out. The way I look at it, man, is fuck. You guys do your thing. I'm going to do my own independent research and figure out what I want. And then when it comes time for me to cast my vote, I'm going to cast my vote. Done. Unless I want to go and be like a political activist and pursue a career in politics where I'm actually having an impact on the outcomes of these elections as it pertains to, you know the president that's chosen for our country, me as a citizen, the only impact that I can have is cast my vote. There is no point 
in me going onto Facebook and trying to convince some guy that I've never seen, nor will I ever see or meet or ever talk to again, why his stance on something is wrong. There isn't. And that's actually <laughs> the exact reason why the other business that James and I run together just over underwent a complete rehaul was because we decided we're like we're, we don't want to dabble in politics it's boring it's you know it's one thing after another the impeachment the trial with the senate the all that it was a it was a fiasco like no, nobody even cares and the people that do care that they're stressing about something that they cannot control so why okay um now, taking that concept of stress a step further, one of the things that a lot of people forget, and one of the things that a lot of people have a hard time accepting, is no matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter how convincing you are, no matter how much energy you expend, you will never be able to control what another person does. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Like, you, it'll, it'll never, never happen. Even with your own children. I mean, your children will ultimately come to an age where it doesn't freaking matter what you say, they're going to do what they want to do. And so... As parents, we raise our children. The best thing that we can do is just teach them the difference between right and wrong and the ability to make the right decisions for themselves. But no, not just that, but enable them to understand that when they fail, it's a learning experience more than anything. And to learn from their mistakes and move forward, right? But as far as us as adults interacting with other adults, you can't control what other people are going to do and how they're going to respond and how they're going to react and the way that they're going to handle things and how they process information. And the list goes on. And this is actually really great advice for those of you who are in marriages or long-term relationships or any type of relationship is when it comes to your partner, ultimately they have a choice just like you do to continue being in the relationship and investing in the relationship and doing what they want to be, you know, participating in the relationship, making compromises and committing to changed behavior or committing to this or that, it's on them, just like it's on you. And a lot of times, going back to what I'm saying, you can't control what people do. Just because you did something doesn't necessarily always mean that somebody's going to do what you want them to out of a sense of obligation or what you think is right, right? Your idea of what the right thing is could be completely different than what somebody else's idea of the right thing is. And most of that is just perspective. Maybe they have information, experience, or knowledge that you're not exposed to that's impacting their decision-making process. Right? So going back to the concept of stress, the other thing that a lot of people choose to do when it comes to not letting go of the things that they can't control is worrying about influencing or impacting the decisions made by others. So my personal assessment and opinion is that if we as human beings collectively choose to stop worrying and stressing about the things that we can't control including other people our stress levels are going to be reduced by 90% just like that which is going to in turn allow us to spend time focusing on the positive things in our lives right and less time focusing on the negative things that we're stressing about that we can't control right which is going to in turn like i said improve our overall well-being and quality of life okay 
So going back to what I was saying is mental fortitude. Why did I like name this podcast tonight, you know, mental fortitude? Well, because it takes mental discipline and fortitude to have the serenity to the, accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thank you, Jim. It's not just wisdom to know the difference, like it says in that prayer, right? It's also the fortitude to, and the discipline to force yourself and tell yourself that you are not going to allow yourself to stress over the things that you can't change or the things that you don't have an impact on. Okay? So this week, as we're progressing and waiting for the next Make America Swole Again podcast, I charge you guys to try to make a change in your mental state. Try to let go and relinquish the worry and the focus on the things that are outside of your control. What can I control? Spend your time focused on that. And I guarantee you, in just seven days, you'll come back and we'll sit down during this podcast and you're going to see a significant increase in how you feel, your quality of life. And your well-being. Okay. Junior's here. What's up, Bubba? <laughs> yeah. You want to say hi to everyone? And say hi, ya. Say hi. <laughs> All right. Okay. So transitioning into part two of the podcast, how does this all apply? Now he wants to talk. He's just getting over a nasty cold. He said, I try to only stress during cardio. Once I'm done with cardio, the issue is over. Let it rest with the workout. (laughs) Yeah, man. (laughs) I don't even bother stressing around cardio. Fuck it. (laughs) It's funny, we do. So... If you guys don't know this about me, I, I during my day job I work as an engineer. I'm a I'm a site lead for a government contract. Hiya. And huh, what is it? Yeah. He's literally biting the microphone. <laughs> well in the place I work, I'm legit the only Army guy working for the Marine Corps, right? So it's a constant thing. We're going back and forth about Marines, the Army, the Army's this, the Marines are that. So <laughs> this week, if you watch my Instagram stories, I was talking smack about Mike because he works in the same office as I do. And um, one of the guys who work with, his name's Mark, he's like, what about Jessica Lynch? What about... You know, bird doll. What about this guy? What about that guy? They're all armies talking all this smack. I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> so it's it's kind of funny, man. You know, when you when you work in that type of environment with all those folks, um, and one of the things they always they always talk smack about is the difference between uh, Marine Corps and Army PT standards, right? So in the Army, you know, you run a two mile. And you do, you know, push-ups and sit-ups. Um, and then the Marines, you do three miles and pull-ups and crunches, right? And they ride the fact that they have to run further. So the shit that they give me all the time is, you couldn't even finish a three-mile. Look how big you are. You can't even, you know, so it's always a shit-talking thing. And so, yeah, I'll skip the cardio, man. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. Hey, so real quick, I'm going to get the baby settled in. I'll be right back. Shay said, bro, I was Air Force. You want to talk about PT being a joke? <laughs> you know, and that's actually funny. One of the things that we were, we were joking about yesterday was it was like, yeah, you know, Army and Marine Corps will sit here and talk shit all day, but we'll both gang up on the Air Force. 
All right, and the Navy is kind of like the redheaded stepchild that nobody even talks about. <laughs> uh, Miguel said, uh, I actually read something that when you stop worrying about others and what what you're supposed to do and worry about yourself, you actually have less stress in your life. It's funny how much it really makes sense, but people tend to not think about this. Glad you touched up on this. Yep. Um, all right. So part two, segment two of the podcast talks about how all of this pertains to fitness. Okay. I encourage, I implore, I beg that you undergo the maximum amount of fucking stress that you can, that your body and your mind can sustain during every single workout. We talk about this every week. I post videos about this every week. I get on you guys about it every week. Okay. And, you know, there's kind of two things that I wanted to talk about. James said, I was Army Combat Engineer Heavy. Hey, thank you for your service, brother. There's a lot of vets that are part of this group. I think for good reason. Um, people like us have a tendency to attract each other, right? So <laughs> I think that uh, the fact that I'm a vet, I work you know, in the special operations community, I've been doing it for a long time, it's easy to speak to that audience, right? Um, so anyway... Two things that I want to talk about as it pertains to the whole fitness piece and the Josh Holyfield programming and the training. Okay. The first thing is, uh, like I was saying, I encourage you, implore you to undergo the maximum amount of stress. But I want you to understand, just like I said earlier, okay, when you're stressing about these other things that you're that you can no, have no possible impact on in your life you're directly and detrimentally impacting the work that you're putting in in the fucking gym. So if you have no other reason to listen to the advice and information that I gave you tonight, I want you to understand the fact that if you decide that you want to sit and stress about something that you can, can't control, you're greatly impacting the results that you're going to be getting from the gym. If you're overweight and trying to lose weight, that increased cortisol is going to impact your weight loss. If you're trying to gain weight, it's the same. You need to recover. If you have a hard time sleeping, if you have a poor appetite, all these things that stress is doing, and this cortisol is doing to your body, it's going to impact your gains. It's directly impacting your protein synthesis. Stop fucking worrying about shit and get in the gym and use the gym as a stress relief Instead of worrying about the gains that you're trying to get or the results that you're trying to see or the progress that you're trying to make. Take it for what it is. Live in the moment and use that gym and that workout as a way to release that stress. Not bring more unto yourself. Okay? And I talk about this a lot. I'm going to tell you right now, excuses... And this kind of goes back into the mental fortitude piece, okay? Excuses come in all shapes and sizes. I hear all of them. Every single fucking excuse you can imagine, I get. For those of you guys who don't know, if you per if you if you download my four week program and you opt into my emails and or you opt into my Facebook messages for me to check in to, on you and see how things are going. Every week or so, I'm going to send you some information. Every couple of days, I'll send you a link to like, hey, this is my nutrition guide. This is my whatever, right? The amount of responses I get to those, most people respond. I would say probably about 50% respond. And out of the 50% respond, I would say about 15 to 20% of them tell me all about why they haven't started or why they can't go to the gym or why they can't do this or why they can't do that. And I'll be honest with you, man, like some of these fucking excuses are convincing. Like, and here's the thing. When I say excuse, like, what does that actually mean? We don't, a lot of times we look at excuses as like a negative thing, right? Like, but in the perspective of like going back to like the most basic excuse we could think of is like if you have to go to elementary school but you had a doctor's appointment, that's an excused absence, 
right? So sure, excuses can be valid. And that can be a justifiable reason for why you don't do something. But like at the end of the fucking day, it's still an excuse, right? And the way that I look at it is when it comes to excuses, it's a matter of priority. What has a higher priority? Okay, so in the case of you missed school because you had a doctor's appointment, the priority is for you to receive medical care from your doctor. Therefore, it's excusable. It's kind of common knowledge and commonly accepted by society that, you know, being seen by a medical professional is more important than one day of school. Got it. Okay. But when it comes to the gym or it comes to your fitness and when it comes to your health and your well-being, okay, it's a matter of priority. Where do your priorities lie? I've got this going on. I travel for work. I've got that going on. I'm having trouble with my diet. I don't have the motivation. I this, I that, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of the day, what it comes down to is you're willing to tell whatever story you need to fucking tell yourself to justify the fact that your health, your well-being, your fitness, your exercise, whatever you want to call it, is less important than whatever else you're having to deal with or manage in your life. And it's a cyclic effect. A lot of times, these problems that people are undergoing, specifically with their health for why they can't go to the gym, are actually feeding into the fact that they can't go to the gym. I'm so overweight that I'm you know, whatever, like the list goes on. I underwent surgery. I hurt my back. I hurt my shoulder. I'm this, I'm that. All excuses. You're allowing whatever that variable or that thing is in your life to dictate and justify why you're not choosing to make a change or prioritize your health. Right? I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Let's call it for what it is. Now, again, if you in your life, you're in a place where, fuck yeah, my father has been sick and I've been by his deathbed for the last four weeks. I haven't been able to make it to the gym. Got it, man. I'm sure that if I was in the same position, I'd do the same thing. But we're still calling it an excuse. Let's just make that clear. <laughs> so when you guys see me post my comments on the Facebook group or you po see me reply to fo folks or talk, you know, if I'm talking to you or whatever it is and I call it an excuse, don't think that I'm looking at you negatively. I'm just the guy who's willing to call it for what it is. Now, if you look at me as calling that an excuse as a negative thing, that's on you. If your perception is that that's a negative way of me referring to your personal and, you know, apparently unique situation that only you've experienced and underwent, then obviously that's your own insecurity that's reflecting on you, not me. It's an excuse. Okay, moving on. So when it comes to me, if you don't, if you don't use my resources, if you don't use my plans, my training, my guides, my videos, my stuff, my whatever it is, and, you know, you come to me like, hey, I can't do this because of this, and I want special accommodation, well, if you're going to feed me excuses, I have no interest in helping you. Not because I don't think your excuse is justifi isn't justifiable, it's because I have plenty of people without excuses that are, that need my time and my energy. No hard feelings. When you're ready to set your excuses aside and reprioritize, and we can talk about, you know, the help that you need. Pretty straightforward, right? So when it comes to mental fortitude and excuses, right, um, those kind of go hand in hand too. Because you have to have the mental fortitude as a person to set your feelings and your emotions aside 
and recognize that what you're doing is creating an, ex an excuse and have the ability and the fortitude to look internally and come to an honest determination with yourself looking in the mirror and deciding whether or not that excuse is actually valid or if you're just creating that as a way to I don't know not feel bad right so mental fortitude is huge right and then we could go on and say you know mental fortitude also has to do with uh, not needing motivation motivation is the last fucking thing that you should need to go to the gym Motivation is the last thing that you should need to follow a training program or stay in line with your nutrition and your diet. It requires discipline. Bottom line. And if you don't have the mental fortitude to maintain the discipline that you need to seek the, to achieve the goals that you have for yourself, then you're not going to achieve those goals. Or your, or your progress toward achieving that goal is going to be extremely um, hindered. I mean, even me, I, you know, I had pizza for lunch today, a whole large meat lover's pizza. I faltered in my discipline. Okay. Everybody has that. The question is, is over the long term, big picture, strategically, when we're looking top down, are you consistent? Did you have the mental fortitude to maintain the consistency and the forward progress in achieving your goals. Did you have the mental fortitude to accept the fact that what you were making was just an excuse and it wasn't justifying the fact that you weren't make, willing to make action and continue to drive forward and make forward progress? Everyone has obstacles and challenges and potential excuses for why they don't want to do things in their life. The question that you have to ask yourself is this. Is, is this, is, are my actions a reflection of what I want my priorities to be as a human being? And if you can't look in the mirror straight at yourself in the eyes and honestly say it's not, then they're just fucking excuses. Set them aside and move on. That's it. All right. <clears throat> So transition into the announcements, okay? Um, very first thing is, you know, you, you like what I'm doing, you like the content, you like the videos, you like the podcasts, you like all that stuff, support me. Head to the website, grab some merch, pick up one of my training programs. I gotta feed my son. Look, he's crazy. See, here he comes. Um, one of the things that you guys might have noticed over the last few days is I've been doing... Uh, quick tip videos. Um, so one of the announcements that I made a couple weeks ago when we did our last podcast was that I hired the photographer. I've got him coming in during my gym sessions during the week. And so if you guys didn't notice, most of my quick tips this week were shoulders. Well, the reason for that is because he recorded on shoulder day. <laughs> so this week is going to be leg day. So you guys will get a bunch of leg day quick tips. So if you want, shoot me a message. Hold on, man, chill. Shoot me a message on what exercises, what tips you'd like to see for leg day this week. And on Thursday when I go in and record, I will make sure I include those. All right. The intent of these quick tips isn't to give you like a whole full on, this is how you perform this exercise and do this. It's, <laughs> hey, this is how I do it. Here are some of the common mistakes that I see and here's what you can do to change it. Should be about two to three minutes at most. Just to give you guys, you know, a little bit of insight on the inside of my mind when I'm doing my workouts. That's it. If you guys think they're valuable, let me know. If you don't, if you'd like to see something different, let me know. Okay. Um, other than that, man, I think uh, that's going to be a quick one. Overhead squats. You keep giving me that shit. You, I'm not going to do overhead. I don't do overhead squats. I will never do overhead squats. Um, you, you know that I don't do ever overhead squats. All right. <laughs> There's no point in time where I'm going to do, ever do an overhead squat. Now, you know, you say that, but I guarantee at some point during James and I working together, he's going to capture a video of me doing a fucking overhead squat. He's going to make me look like an idiot. Okay, so 
the exercises that I focus okay. on for the quick tips, all right, specifically pertain to exercises that are within my existing training. Oh, ah! Buddy, you gotta stop screaming. Everybody can hear you. Oh, ah! <laughs> all right. Oh, ah! So <laughs> we're up to over an hour tonight, you guys. Hey, I really appreciate your time. I really hope that you guys have seen the new merch that I've been dropping. Junior's hungry. I'm going to drop off and feed him. It's been a pleasure tonight. Hip thrusters, you got it, Miguel. I got you, I got you brother. Um, and uh, oh, we'll go eat. You want to say bye-bye? Come over here. Come here. He's mad because he's hungry. I want, I, want him to sh I want to show you a trick that I taught my son. Check it out. Come here, son. Come here. Come here. Oh, my goodness. Hey, can you say bye-bye? <laughs> He's hiding around the corner. <laughs> Aaron. Aaron said, uh, thanks, bro. I really needed to hear what you were saying tonight, especially the stress part. It's been a lot. It's what's going on with my body. James, I'm just giving you a hard time, brother. You know I love you. All right, guys. I got to jump off here. The baby's going upstairs now. He's... His sleep schedule is all jacked up, man. He's probably going to have me up until 1 or 2 o'clock tomorrow morning or t in the morning. So I got to tend to my baby. All right. I'll talk to you guys next week. Stay vigilant.